everybody? Welcome back to the Reporter Show, man. We are back for the spring semester. Took a little break, so now we're back in action, but sadly, we back in action without one of the co-hosts, cause I don't know what he doing. I'm a, I'm a call him out. He probably sleeping. I know he just got done with practice. He probably went back to the crib, tried to take a little nap, and he overslept. So that's a shame on you, my boy. I'm sad at you right now. We're going we're gonna to post it and let everybody know that you missed the first show of the spring. That's on you. But anywho, I'm going to welcome my co-host that did show up today. You know what I'm saying? We got Devin Acosta over here to my left. And we have a special co-host today, Angel Vega. What's up? What's up? That's the SID in the fall. <laughs> so he already know everything that we do. He already know everything about all the games, all the sports. So I figured, hey, no better man to ask. So we're going to go ahead and kick this one off, man with uh, men's basketball. Over the break, they only took three losses, which that's pretty decent. I mean, I wish they would have took none, but they took three losses. Uh, the first one came to John Brown. That was a surprise. I think that one was on the buzzer beater, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was a heartbreaker. Then the second one came to Sagu, and then just this past weekend, we'll get into that one. Um, but they had a lot of wins, though. Uh, they got one against Oklahoma City, OPSU, Northern New Mexico, USAO, Tex West, UNC Dallas, OPSU, and Central Christian. Uh, so that's a quick little rundown of men's basketball. But let's go ahead and get into the games that happened this past week. Uh, I know that they had a strong outing on uh, Tuesday, I believe, against OPSU. OPSU. That, was, that was a blowout. Yeah. They, they completely killed them, did mm -hmm. their thing, got any shot we wanted, shut them down defensively. Yeah. So, I mean, I feel like that was a great game of what we could do. Yeah, 93 to 54. That one was, uh, that was, I mean, that was like a given. Like, I mean, we, they walked out there on the court and I was just thinking to myself, yeah, we should win this game. And that's exactly what they did. So that, that was good to start out the week. Uh, I think students came back on that, on that, wasn't it last week? The yeah. students came back? Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. some oh, students probably came out there and checked mm -hmm. that one out. I don't know, mm -hmm. were, were you at that game? Were you I attending was. Game? Yes, I was. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, we, we had a couple of folks back, man, and they, they started out strong at, at the beginning of the week. But then Thursday, we went into the game against Central Christian. Uh, I feel like their record doesn't really represent how good that team is. Um, I think they have a losing record. They're definitely under under 500, but they didn't play like it. I will say that that was a, that was a pretty stout team. Yeah, uh, they, gave, they gave us a game. Yeah. And, but I mean, on top of that, I feel like for that game, we didn't play like – we how, how we should have, how I know that we can. We I feel like we, we failed to live up to our own expectations. Yeah. And that's what allowed the, that game to be so close. But yeah. I mean, props to Central Christian, I mean, like, like you said, you know. Yeah. They, they did look solid out there. I mean, as Tuck would say, it don't matter how you get it, but a win is a win. Yeah, I mean, you're right. I mean, that's true. A win is a win. I will say that, but it was a tough win. Uh, we went in that one, we, we pulled out an 85 to 81 win against Central Christian. Um, but I remember looking at some of my workers when we were uh, when we were broadcasting the game, and I said to myself, I was like, if we play like this against Langston, it probably ain't gonna look too good. Man, man. And uh, we'll we'll go ahead and jump straight into that one. Uh, we went against Langston. They are the number two team in the nation and the number one team in the conference, of course. Um, but I expected a fight. I expected a dog fight. I thought we was gonna go in there and give them a little run for their money and maybe even pull out the upset. I think last year we upset them. Mm -hmm. um, we were, a big win. Yeah. Huge. Yeah. And right. so I was looking forward to that one this year, and it, it just didn't turn out that well for us. Um, I don't think we came out with a hot hand. They did. They yeah, started out. Flat. It was 8 0. Yeah. 8 0 off rip. And I feel like from that point on is where it just got bad. I feel like we gave up mentally. Like we, we just laid down. Because from, like literally from tip off, it was hard to see much good things as a team. We shot horrible. I mean, I think it was 13%. Yeah, from three, three, from three. So I mean, like, and especially like I said before, you know what we can do. I've seen Lent light it up, mm -hmm. Q light it up from three, and so it's like for us to come out and perform like that against a team like Langston, mm -hmm. it I feel like that's really, really damaging to us. Not yeah, only on the record, but mentally as well. Morally, all yeah. of it, everything mentally. Yeah. I mean, what what what'd you have from that game? Did you were you able to check it out? I was able to go catch a little bit of it. I yeah. mean, it just I don't know. It felt like. I thought it was going to be a lot closer. Yeah. Um, obviously, things didn't go that way with the shooting performance and with everything that happened after like the first five, ten minutes. It just felt like we weren't really in it as much. But I mean, 
I don't know. I feel like we could have performed better that day. We just didn't have it. I'm sure. I know that they'll come back fighting and clawing back at, at the next couple games that come up. So it's just, I, we'll just. I think that's the most important thing when he said that day we just didn't have it. I think, yeah. you know, sometimes, I mean, it's a sport. <laughs> you're not going to play. You're going to have your days. Yeah, you're going you to have, have your days where you're hot, and yeah. you're going to have your days where you can't hit nothing. You know what I'm saying? And, yeah. and that day, we just couldn't hit anything. Um, like I said, we shot 13% from the three, on, man. On top of that, I mean, like, I said we played decent defense, but, I mean, they were, they were hitting everything. Yeah, they, were. they were hitting everything, and we couldn't hit a single shot. I feel like our ball movement lacked, our hustle lacked at some points in the game. And so I think it was more of those, like, components of the game that, cost us to lose by that much Definitely. like were they a good team of course they were yeah. but I don't think it should have been that bad it shouldn't have been I think it was a surprise I mean we got hit in the mouth like you said earlier it was 8-0 11-3 at mm -hmm. the beginning of the game and then we went into the half we were still losing big um, I thought we was gonna come out the half you know with a little fire under us uh, I think Bowl came out and hit a couple of quick shots but mm -hmm. he's it, been good. yeah he's yeah, been he, playing he, he real been well playing good. Bo, Bo's been on one. yeah he's, He's been playing. Exactly. So he came out, hit a couple shots. I thought we was going to pick something back up, and it just didn't go our way. So uh, we'll have to bounce back, man. I know that we came out of winter break uh, counting last week as well uh, with a 13-5 overall record and an 8-4 and four, uh, conference record. So um, that puts us at the middle of the pack, not really where we wanted to be or not really even where we expected to be. Um, but... It's not like the season's over with. We got a couple more games left. I'm, about 10. We got 10 more. About Let 10. me see where we at in the, in the uh, season. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Right on the dot. Well, okay. That boy, pay attention. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we got 10 more games left in the regular season, man. So, 10 game win streak. 23 and 5 ain't bad. That's what I'm expecting. Yeah. I like 23 and 5. And then we got Langston to get into the end of the season. So if we catch a little win streak, go into that game and sort of bounce back from what we did, um, it'll be a lot different, though, because, of course, we'll be in Langston. And you know that gym is live. Bro. That gym is live. Oh, yeah. For those of y'all that don't know what the HBCU is, <laughs> go check it out. Go check it out. It's going to be a tough environment to play in for them. Definitely. Like, that's for sure. It'll, it'll be a very tough game. But like I said before, I feel like we are more than capable of it. I feel like this past game was not our brand of basketball. Yeah. So with that being said, like, let's flip the switch and get back on it. Absolutely, bro. Mm -hmm. All right, we're going to jump into the next subject, man. We're going to go ahead and jump straight into women's basketball. Now, women's basketball handled their business for most of the break. I will not lie. I think the only loss that they took over the break was they also took a loss to John Brown, and the second loss came against uh, USAO, um, which was a blowout, to say the least. It was 60-96 to we lost that game. But... The rest of the the rest of the break, man, they've been handling their business. They dropped, I think they had two or three games where they had 100 points. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, Megan Nestor, my goodness. She broke the school record over the break with 22 rebounds. And then just this past weekend, she broke that her own record again and had a game where she had 24 rebounds. 32 points. 32, <laughs> 32, 32 points. points. That's a crazy Ed game. That's Speaking a crazy 32 game. and 24 is like, that's a 2K stat yeah, line, bro. Yeah, like, nah, like nah. you're not supposed to be doing <laughs> you're this. You're not supposed to be doing on that. On a regular basis. I did that on 2K the other day. That's yeah. Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so, speaking of Megan Nesta, though, bro, you already know what it is. She's definitely the certified player of the week. We're not even going to put another nominee on the board. She's the athlete of the week, man. Um, over her last five games, we'll throw that throw that stat line up for y'all to see. She had 24 points and 22 rebounds, 24 points and 13 rebounds, 10 points and six rebounds, 27 points and 16 rebounds, and then 32 points and 24 rebounds. So her last five games, my goodness. She had to plan my career. Yeah, definitely. I mean, she having it her way, she doing whatever she wanna do, and I'm, I'm, I'm glad to see it. So props to you, Megan, on getting the first um, certified player of the week for the spring semester, man. Um, I hope that you keep that going. Um, I'm glad to see uh, you pop out this year. I know uh, past couple of years, sometimes it takes a little, a little growth period once you jump into college or you jump on a new team. It takes you a time to find yourself. And she definitely found herself. Mm -hmm. uh, she knows her game. She's getting to the board. She's getting everything offensively and defensively. And she's putting it right back up and getting her points. Know. Yeah, doing definitely. Job beyond expectation, I think. Mm -hmm. Like, she's out there doing her thing. And it's one of those things where you think about it, it's like, uh, 
I don't know if y'all ever heard this terminology, but it's like she's having a quiet game, but then you check the stats and it's like, dang, she had yeah. she had 32 points yeah. with, with, with how many rebounds? Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? And, and I, I think back to it because I'm like, it was a really quiet game because if you were just watching the game, you wouldn't have thought to yourself, she got about 40 points with almost 30 rebounds. Mm -hmm. I would not have thought that. No. She plays well. And it's, it's because it's not it's not the big highlight plays. Yeah. She's not she's not Euro stepping through the lane. Yeah. She's not pulling deep threes. It's the hustle plays. It's the hustle plays. Yeah, that's exactly it's, it's the hustle plays, them second chance points, getting to the free throw line. Mm -hmm. That's how she, you know, that's that's, that's how that's, she gets hers. So, her her I mean, it's props to her. Especially during that um that game this past Saturday against Langston, Langston. it felt it just looked like she could do whatever she want on the yeah. court and she everything went Everything went right for her, and I think at the half she had a double double already. So yeah, like, she did. It was it was crazy to see. Props to her. Yeah. She she did great. Definitely. So I'm I'm glad to give that to you. I hope that you keep balling, man. And like I said, man, it's just really I like to see that because, like you said, it's not always about the flashy plays. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you got to go out there and go earn it. And I feel like she earned it every game, especially with that stat line. I mean, uh, rebounds. As you know, it's a very physical part of the game. Mm -hmm. People giving you elbows, pulling on you, scratching on you, doing all this stuff. She's going to go up and get the board anyway. So uh, that has helped the Flying Queens win a lot of games and, and handle. Because if you handling the boards, then you handling the points as well. You're limiting their second yeah, chance exactly. points and you're getting your own second chance points. Exactly. And so uh, this past weekend, um, they also got – their wins uh, against OPSU and Central Christian scoring 100 in both of those games. Whooping them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just. Whooping them. <laughs> Not even close. Bill. I ain't going to lie. You know what I'm saying, bro? I mean, it's one thing to get beat, but if somebody drop 100 on your head, so think about that bus ride back home. Bro, and OPSU didn't even touch 40 points. They did. <laughs> they did Central it, Christian barely had 41. Yeah. So it's like. That's. That's Lock, a tough locking one. up on D and just yeah. doing whatever they wanted the whole game. So props to them. And then that Langston game, the energy was there throughout mm -hmm. the entire game. Mm -hmm. Like like we said, Megan brought energy. She brought hustle. She brought effort. And it, in my opinion, fueled the, the team as a whole to that victory. Definitely. I think I think the biggest thing about that game was Langston. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, they were ranked second in conference, mm -hmm. I believe. Let me let me double that, just to make sure I'm not tripping. But I believe that Langston was ranked second, and we were ranked third. So that was sort of like a – that was almost a – that was almost a must win for us. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. So now we flip. Now we're second in conference, and they're third in conference. So that was a really big win. Uh, so I was really happy to see that they came out with a 77-66 win. Uh, Megan, like I said, she broke the school record again for rebounds in a game with 24. Um, and that brought them to 15-3 and three and 10-2 and two in conference on a year. So – they're in a really good spot. I think they're receiving votes uh, for the national ranking, but they haven't they haven't poked that top 25 quite yet. Um, but I have no doubt within the next couple of games, if they keep going how they're going, you'll see them in that top 25 real soon. Um, I remember talking to Coach at the beginning of the season, and uh, I asked him about how he felt being left out of the top 25 for the first time in a little while uh, for the Flying Queens. And he said, you know, it's always, it's always good to be ranked or talked about, but – I feel like when you're left out of the rankings, it's, it's that much, it means that much more you're when you get into the top 25. Yeah. It gives you a little fuel. It does. A little fuel to, to the fire, and then you just got to go. You do. You got to prove yourself. You do. Mm -hmm. And I think, I think there's, there's two different teams. There's a team that sees that, and they, and they take it to the head too much, and then there's a team that sees that, and they take it to heart. You know what I'm saying? And, and they go out there and show it. And I think the Flying Queens have definitely been showing it. So uh, props to y'all for, for coming out over the, over the break with a really good record. And I, I hope that y'all really keep that thing going on. Uh, wrestling, men's and women's, uh, had a cancellation, I believe, this past week uh, for a matchup. So we don't really have too much to go on with them. I know that they had one matchup that I covered over the break against Shriner. The, the men won that matchup 26 to 18. Uh, the woman lost theirs uh, 22 to 26. But outside of that, um, men's and women's both have people in the top 25 rankings of their respective uh, um, weight classes. Uh, Alex Pena is ranked number four at 133 for the men's. Uh, and that's the only guy that we have ranked nationally. But women's, I think we have five still ranked. Uh, Audley Cruz is ranked ninth at 101. Uh, Jonisha Kennedy is ranked 12th at 116. Michaela Heyman. 16th at 130, uh, Audrey Lockhart 19th at 170, Peyton Schulander number 15 at 191, 
Uh, so they got some they got some dogs out mm -hmm. there. I think they had. Uh, I was honestly surprised that we lost that last matchup. We had a couple of, I would consider them upsets, but we dropped a couple of matches that I thought I was like, oh, I thought we was gonna win that one for sure, but we we came out with a, a loss. Um, but the women's team, I believe. They were ranked before the winter break started, before it got really uh, uh, into gear. We were ranked 20th, and I think in wrestling, they do a top 20, not a top 25. Yeah. Uh, so we dropped out of that top 20 over the course of the break. So hopefully we can get back into that thing uh, over these next couple of matchups before we get into conference. So um, it was really a quick one coming back. We're really just giving you guys a recap of everything that happened over the break. Uh, we wanted to get Megan on the show, but I know that y'all athletes, man, y'all got y'all got practices in the, in the afternoon, so I understand y'all got places to be and things to do. But we're going to try to get y'all on the show, man. So if y'all ever want to hop on, you got to show out on the field or the court so we can bring you on the show so you can talk about your game, man. We want to we wanna bring some more things to the show, man. And if y'all really do have other things that y'all want to talk about that y'all want us to cover, y'all got to shoot me an email at porterj at wbu.edu. I'll put that on the on the ending scenes or whatever. But other than that, if y'all do have other things to say, you know, don't be afraid to tell Devin, you see him, hey bro, if y'all add this to the show, I think that'd be pretty cool. If you see Tucker, anybody, you know what I'm saying, just let us know. Oh, I'm for improvement. Yeah, yeah, we gotta improve the show. I know last year we got a little repetitive, we got a little boring, I know. I noticed that we lost some viewers. So I'm trying to bring it back up for the students and something for y'all to be interested in um, over the spring. Uh, all we have is we got a couple of announcements. We got homecoming events coming up. Uh, next month, February 7th through the 10th, will be homecoming events. So y'all y'all keep track of everything going on around campus, all the events and everything like that. Uh, and indoor track will be starting up, I believe, next weekend. I might be mistaken on that, but I believe they're starting up soon. So that's that's the truth right there. So they're they starting up soon. And then Thursday, men's basketball in Women's basketball will be headed to Oklahoma City to face off against Mac U. So two games that we really need to have for both of them, men and women. Uh, Friday, baseball will be kicking off. They'll be headed to Victoria, Texas to play Houston, Victoria, like every other year yep. to kick off the weekend, to kick off the season. They got a, uh, was it a four-game? Four-game series. Four-game series. Four game series. Yeah. They'll be kicking off. Yeah, we, we, we play, play four games. Got to get it down. It's finally here. Yeah, it's, it's finally, finally here, here, man. So I know that long wait. Uh, so we got... We got four matchups for baseball this weekend, and then Saturday, uh, basketball, both men's and women's, will be back in Oklahoma City against Southwestern Christian as well, or Bethany, wherever it is. It's close enough, yeah. Oklahoma City. <laughs> but that's all we got for y'all, man. We'll, we'll see y'all back same time next Tuesday, and like I said, let us know what we can do to make it better, and we'll do it. So uh, that's all we got for y'all. We'll see y'all next week.